The Crew, The Quest for Planet 9. I became aware of this game after I played the Fox and the Forest duet, which is the first cooperative trick-taking game that I had heard of and that I thought was the only one until somebody told me, you know, there's another one. So The Crew, a cooperative trick-taking game. I like trick-taking games. They're simple, but they sometimes have interesting twists. I like cooperative games, so those games seem to fit the bill. Also, the Fox in the Forest duet can only be played with two players. This one goes from three to five. And I've been playing it with my family. We played it with three, so me and my daughters. We played it with four. Uh, the daughters, I, and the wife. Yes, we were able to convince mom to join us. I haven't played it with five, so I cannot comment on that uh, player count because these days I don't have game night. I play with my families or alone. These are days, difficult days of social distancing of spring 20, 2020. So that's the way it is. One day I'll be able maybe to report on how, how the game plays when I play the game night. So the crew... Um, the crew, the quest for Planet Nine. You have a main deck of cards representing different suits with numbers from one to nine, and plus then you have four rocket cards with values from one to four, and the rocket cards are the trump cards. The game per se is a fairly traditional trick-taking game. That is, at the beginning of the game you shuffle all the cards, you assign all the cards, all cards must be assigned to players, and then the player that has the four of rockets becomes the first player. Then we will need to assign some tasks, I'll talk about that later, and those tasks are basically things that we need to complete working together, uh, before the game is over, if we are able to complete the task for the scenario that we are playing, then we win the game, otherwise we lose the game. Say scenario, I say scenario because the game is scenario based. You have 50 different missions, that is 50 different scenarios, that is 50 different ways in which you may lose or you may win, different uh, um, victory conditions. So the game really has a pretty impressive replay value around a very simple, very linear core of basic trick-taking rules. So you select a scenario, that will tell you what are the adjustments that you need to make, what are the things that you need to complete, etc, etc. So for example, maybe it's a scenario in which a certain, which is a certain player, the player must win no tricks, or a player must win a trick with a certain card in it, and so on and so forth. The core idea is very simple, as I said. We're playing trick-taking, the first player goes and plays a card. Other players must follow suit if they can. If they cannot, and if they have a rocket, they play a rocket card. If they don't have any of those, then they can play any card. Once everybody played a card, the highest leading card wins, unless trump cards were playing, in which case the highest trump card wins. In this case, the highest trump card and only one is this one, so the player who played that card wins. If this is the situation, the leading card was this symbol here, yellow, then the highest yellow is an 8, the player that played that card wins. All of the cards that have been used are discarded, it doesn't matter, you don't have to give them usually to, uh, to specific players, but it's important to know who won the trick, uh, because the player will go next. Also because you will probably need to... Um, manipulate who wins the tricks in order to win the game. As I said, there are different tasks they need to complete and many tasks will revolve around these task cards, which are just the teeny tiny smaller brothers or sisters of these ones. They're exactly the same. They mirror the deck entirely. They're just smaller so that you can tell them apart from the big ones. Again, these are task cards. A scenario may instruct you to assign a number of task cards to players at the beginning of the game and say, I take this one, or my wife takes this one, Louisa takes this one, and I take this one. Then we play the game based on the rules that I was telling you. The <clears throat> The rule is that in order to win the game, we need to fulfill these three tasks, which is, which means the player that has the task card must win the trick in which that card is played. I don't need to have it, but I need to win when somebody plays it, I need to win that trick. And the same here, when uh, the player that has a task card wins the trick in which the card is played, the task card is removed from the game, is discarded, 
If the player that has a task card does not win the trick in which the task card was played, we fail the task and we lose the game immediately. As simple as that. There may be complications though in different scenarios. So maybe the cards need to be fulfilled in a specific order. This one goes first and this one goes second. Ouch. And different tokens may make things tougher for us. We cannot communicate freely because that would be too easy. So there's a lot of deduction here. You're trying to figure out what the players have based on what they play or what they don't play. That's very important. The only way you can communicate um, is by using these tokens here. Each player has one token that can be used only once per game. It is split to that side after you use it. You play, when you want to use it, you play a card from your hand. It still counts as in your hand, that's why you will take one of these blank cards and put it in your hand as a reminder. And you put it, in, you place it face up on the table in front of you and you put this token right there on top to indicate that this is the highest card that you have in that suit. You put it at the bottom to indicate that is the lowest value card you have in that suit. You put it there in the middle to indicate that that is the only card that you have in your hand in that suit. If you want to talk about a card, say something about a card and it does not fall into one of those categories, highest, lowest only, tough, bad for you. You cannot communicate about that card. Those are the only two things that you can say about one card per game. Pretty, pretty tough, eh? So that's, uh, that's how it works. Uh, select a mission, select the parameters of a mission, again, based on the scenario book, assign tasks, assign possible other things, determine other things, again, based on what you need to do to win the scenario, assign all cards, play a trick-taking game in which people don't get to talk about their cards, and win or lose based on the conditions of the scenario that you chose. This game has been a big, big hit in my family, even more than I expected. What a surprise to figure out that mom uh, really likes retaking games. We knew that, but she got into this one so much. She has been asking to play games as opposed to graciously agreeing to join my daughters and I as we play games more often. That is remarkable when she says, oh, I haven't played that one in a while. How about, how about, why don't you try a new mission? What really works in my family is also this, that you may have figured out by the number of videos that I've put out uh, since 2010 that I like to try many new games. As opposed to my wife likes to play one game or just not so many games and go back to the same games over and over and over and over again. Sometimes we play a game together. She's like, oh, I'll never play it again now because you're going to start playing 10 more games next week. This game has it all. This game she likes because it's always the same game. Because it's always a trick-taking game. Even better, it's a game that she had already played. Because, of course, she had played other trick-taking games at this one. But it's always a new game. So I'm happy. So it's incredible. It's a quantum game or an anamorphic game. An anamorphosis that changes uh, its subject depending on the position of the observer. Because it's a game that is always very similar to itself and it's always very different. Because playing with different victory conditions, different tasks does change the experience. So it's an almost miraculous game. I don't know how many people have the same conundrum between somebody who is just loyal to just a few designs and somebody who wants to explore a million things. But this game actually solves that dilemma in my family. That is not a small thing. In general, it is just such a fun game. I like the variety, I already said that. But then the missions have just different kinds of challenges. Playing it with children is also very good because you can see the little minds figuring out, wait a second, how can I win a game with a one. How can I win a round with a one? Oh yeah, we have to deplete things and everybody has to have such bad cards that no one can uh, no one can follow a one and there are no rocket cards. And so that guessing game, that logic game, that is really fun. Um, I prefer this one to the Fox in the Forest Duet, which was fun for what it was, but I feel like now I graduated to a game that has even more of that mind game, but cooperatively, more of that logic, more of that indirect communication, the very fact that you play with at least three people 
makes it more complex, increases the chances that at least one of you will mess up. Um, it's great. So much fun. We haven't played all the missions yet, but I think we're going to play more games of the crew, the quest for Planet Nine tonight, because it's such a fun game. It's a, such a simple game. It's a game that you already played, and yet you haven't. That you already know how to play, and yet it'll be different every time. I'm very enthusiastic because we had so much fun and we're gonna have so much fun. And once we finish the 50 scenarios, then we go back and again it will feel like I'm trying a new game and my wife will be happy because we're exploring new layers of the same game. So really high endorsement from me for The Crew, The Quest for Planet Night. A, nine. A great game for these days of social distancing because it is a game that you can play with your family and it is a game with huge replay value for all the reasons they explain. But it's not just replay value but also the play value which is high. Really, great game. Highly recommend it.